Well, I heard it was a Mexican tradition and that when your grandmother died, if you threw them over it brought you good luck. I've been to a few Bucks parties in my life and uh, what we normally do is the Bucks end up getting stripped and their shoes end up on the power lines. When people are buying their new shoes, the new runners, they come outside, they ditch their old ones, chuck them over power lines and head home. There was a competition around the world to see who could throw their shoes the highest over a power line. There's some amazing stuff from the Himalayas. There's a lot more going on than just the shoes on the power line. The government don't want you to know about this. This goes right to the top. I think it's always after a bust up, you know? The woman throws his stuff out. I mean, it's never ladies' shoes up there, it's always men's shoes. You never see any stilettos up there, do you? It's mainly a sand shoe or runner type shoe that we have. No particular brand. We just go out there, cut them down and chuck them out. If you mention it to people, they say, oh, there's that aha response. They go, oh, I've always noticed those and I've always wondered about them. And um, I think one of the things that uh, sociologists would want to bring to the explanation is, uh, is thinking about um, how they become part of an urban landscape. Those, uh, those shoes remain there. And in that sense, it's like a message in a bottle that's arrived partially erased or its purposes are no longer intelligible to us. And um, young people usually say, well, it's just random, man. But uh, it's still purposive behaviour. Somebody threw the shoes up there. I mean, there are such things as Air Nikes, I believe, but I don't think that uh, Air Nikes can, um, can fly up there on their own. I've heard that it's usually local teenagers throw their shoes up onto the lines to indicate that they've lost their virginity for the first time. My dad told me that when he was young, like throwing your shoes on, over the power line was like a symbol like, of a loss of virginity in that. So yeah, I was like excited. I just ran out, chucked my Nikes up, threw them on the power line. And yeah, like the next day, you know, all the mates from school on the bus saw my shoes and were like, yeah, those Boris's shoes, he lost. His virginity with Crystal, he had sex with her, because those are his shoes. I ended up losing my virginity to uh, his ex, um, Crystal. <laughs> but um, the sexual energy from the shoes gets transferred through all of the different power lines to all of the different houses. I didn't say that. And like... I didn't say that. Not that. Yes, you did. No. That's stupid. You're, you told me that on the night. Now what James is doing here is he's tying the two shoelaces together. What you have to understand is he would be really excited right now because he's just had his first um, sexual intercourse. So um, yeah, he's going to try and do a, a triple eight knot, but if he fails to, he'll just do whatever he can in his state of ecstasy. And that looks pretty good, James, and he's pretty much about right to go. takes out certain drug dealers' territory, so other dealers know not to, not to sell on their patch. Something to do with drugs or drug territory, drug sales potentially and so on. I know why. It's not a theory, it's actually been from a very good source, that it's a, a sign that there's a drug dealer in the area. Well, we, we were obviously made aware of these theories, and we looked at it closely by our serious crimes department, and we took, we took it on board to see if there was any substance and um, in doing so we left no stone unturned we did a fair bit of soul searching as well and the conclusion was at the end of the day there was no evidence to support these theories whatsoever. Our oh, rumour has it when the um, hubby's gone off and done the dirty the missus throws the uh, shoes over the line any pair of shoes he has obviously so he can't actually leave. Brian started drifting away about six months into the relationship. I rang Sal and told her all about it. She heard that apparently if you throw your guy's shoes over the power lines, he wouldn't leave. Brilliant. I mean, Brian couldn't leave without his favourite pair of runners. See, that's where I threw Brian's shoes. Obviously, it's a fallacy. I mean, they're the shoes, but there's no Brian. We strongly discourage any people from throwing those shoes over our power lines. Uh, it diverts our maintenance crews away from other important tasks. 
and also it has the potential to cause problems with supply to customers. Shoes any good? Yeah, not bad, haven't they? Mate, I've never seen shoes like that before. There's some sort of European Adidas. We have seen that uh, in some suburbs, some coastal suburbs, uh, that there are more shoes. Um, in the Cronulla area, where we've had 30 pairs of shoes thrown up onto the line. The truth is, the people who own the shoes aren't around anymore. They're gone, you know and the places they take them to, they're not going to be doing any jogging. I always tell my kids they're a form of uh, urban fruit bat that hangs around. We all know that shoes have got a tongue and a soul, but they just don't have the heart to tell people they've got smelly feet. Up they go. <coughs> I probably said too much, so you know, maybe we should just cut it there. Uh, one thing is for sure, the fact that we don't know what's going on tends to make us more intrigued and it may be that the real fascination of this phenomenon lies not so much in its intelligibility but precisely in the reverse of that, that we're forced to speculate upon it and that's what really intrigues us. It could be the one person doing it all. I think it's the uh, modern equivalent of the eternity man. Did you ever throw your boots up on the power lines? No. Only if I had like a really crappy plan I was gonna have and I was gonna get a new pair.